Tim is not feeling good and he was in the tent and walked off and I don't know where he is now. So I have to go find him. I don't know. He's very feverish and didn't sleep at all last night and neither did I. I found him. See about the water situation. Tim is sick with a fever, throwing up, chills, really pounding headache. He's taken a bunch of medicine that we have, but it doesn't seem to do much. Um, and we're stuck out here in McCarthy, Alaska, and we don't have any more water. Yeah, it's never good when you're in a really remote area and one of you can't evacuate the other out, you know. Exactly. First I'm gonna get Tim the last of my water. Sacrifice my water. It's really cold and windy. Everybody, welcome back to another episode of No Tears Frontiers. In this series, we travel all over the world on our KTM 1190 motorcycle. We ride two up and we've been through Africa and the Americas. We are currently on our trip to Alaska and back. And we thank you so much for joining us on our journey around the world on our motorcycle. In the last episode, <laughs> Tim mentioned that he was feeling a little bit ill. Yeah. You know what? I don't feel good today. I don't know why. I think it was the chips and salsa. I think it was the, <laughs> the seasoned dots that I ate way too thousand. Oh, many, yeah. So. Too many yeah. seasoned pretzels. Yeah. You said that your stomach was kind of not feeling good. And it was more like a joke at the time. Yeah. There's a serving size, and I always <laughs> multiply it by like 20. And yep. that's, that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> so, first and foremost, that night, we'd set up camp. We were in McCarthy, Alaska, which beautiful. is gorgeous. Yes. registered for camping and there might be a place we can camp with the view of the glacier. It is way out there. It is smack dab in the middle of the largest national park in the United States and one of the largest wilderness areas in the world. So there's like this little dirt road that goes there and it is very, very remote. But there's a gas station halfway there to get gas there, folks, because there's no gas in McCarthy, mm -hmm. which I didn't know when I was past this thing. But <laughs> I was like, thank God I got gas. Yeah, it, it, it's out there, but it has beautiful views. There was a giant glacier right there. Yeah. And so we were super excited to just camp with the view of this glacier. All right, so I'm getting ready to set up our tent at our campsite tonight with the beautiful view of the glacier here in McCartney. McCartney? No, McCarthy, Alaska. I'd say it's about 45, 50 degrees out right now. It's pretty chilly but it's not raining. So for that, I'm very thankful. There were pockets of rain all throughout the past half hour of getting here. So I 
I'm not going to assume that it is not going to rain. So I'm gonna try to get the camp set up pretty quick. Um, we're here next to a teepee. And we have this lovely view of one of the largest glaciers I've ever seen. We are also in the middle of the nation's largest national park, St. Elias. And it's the only national park with an actual town in the middle of the park. This is McCarthy, Alaska, and the town is in the middle of the park. And that's because there's a lot of private land that is still owned, even though it is all a part of a national park. So it's kind of interesting and most of all, beautiful. And as I was setting up our pots and pans to have dinner, Tim had walked over to the bathroom. The bathroom, <laughs> that's <Okay>. right. <laughs> I'm standing there by the table, kind of banging these pots and pans around. So it was quite loud, but I see something out of the corner of my eye and I turn and there was a fox. This fox may have been the most beautiful creature I have ever seen. Excuse me. <laughs> you? Besides Tim. There you go. The fox was, well, he's also a fox. This fox was the most beautiful creature I had ever seen. Four-legged. Four-legged creature. <laughs> he was black and brown with these brown stripes, and most strikingly, he had I think it was a she. She had these um, white spots that were kind of on the knees and elbows and the tip of her tail. She was completely unafraid of me. I was making noise, she just looked at me, kept searching for whatever she was looking for, sniffing around the bushes, and continued on her way. And it was getting to be quite dark, it was twilight, so I didn't really get a good shot of her, but it was a very, very special moment for me. Yeah, and I was having my own special moment of <laughs> throwing up my yeah. big New England clam chowder. So we were so concerned about bears in the area. When you camp at this campground, they give you like your little receipt and on the back, it's all about like bear warnings and how to store your food and stuff. And most of that is about putting it in your vehicle. Well, we don't have a vehicle that we can put our food into and so we were concerned about where to put all of our food and things that smelled and we, you know, worked really hard at this. Then Tim, unfortunately, threw up all of this clam chowder soup mm. that he had and it wasn't right next to the tent, but... It was in sniffing distance. <laughs> Like, if it attracted a bear, they'd be like, mm, that, was, that was all right, but <laughs> I want something a little more meatier. <laughs> yeah, and exactly. That, that looks to be a little taco over there that, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't worried about the bears, but I knew there was a fox, and I didn't want a fox messing yeah. around with our, our uh, you know, our food and such. I was worried about the bears, um, but of course, I was mostly worried about you. Ah, uh, there it is. <laughs> because... <laughs> good, good catch. Because I might wake up in the middle of the night and start licking this clam chowder and get aggressive. <laughs> well, I wanted you to feel better. Yeah, that wasn't happening. I was sweating. I was calling out for my, my mom. Yeah, in the night, Tim got a really bad fever. He was not doing well all night long. Um, no, it sucks. And like I was sweating and like I was like, ah, okay, no. Yeah. Yeah. No, just mumbling. And then Marissa would be like, what are you saying? And I'm like, I'm just I'm mumbling, y'all. Don't bother me. Well, I was very bothered, you know? I was I, very oh, was all saying, Can we just all have a moment of silence in the city? <laughs> Marissa being bothered as I'm like calling out to my mother. <laughs> and so, of course, we didn't sleep well that night. No. Tim is not feeling good. And he was in the tent and walked off, and I don't know where he is now. So I have to go find him. He might have walked all the way to like the port of Patties, but I don't know. He 
was very feverish and didn't sleep at all last night and neither did I. He's not doing well. I found him. It was such a beautiful spot, but when we woke up in the morning and I realized, wow, Tim is really out of sorts. He is unable to ride the motorcycle, unable to form full sentences, like he's very, very sick. So my mission was to take care of Tim. We weren't gonna be going anywhere. And I realized that the situation was pretty dire because we were running out of water. Mm -hmm. We were also running out of food, but more importantly, we were running out of water. I'm gonna go see about the water situation. because the water out here is super murky. It doesn't look good for drinking. Look at that. There's a lot of soap coming out from the bottom of this lake. I mean, obviously we'd filter it, but it's really, really gross. Could be full of minerals, I'm not sure. Um, it'll definitely clog our filter. And, um, and this place, usually we have like our little uh, uh, water filter, our MSR gravity yeah. filter, which is awesome. But this little glacier lake that we were on was murky, 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 silty, silty. Yeah. Again, it was just all this dirt. It wasn't like that crystal blue, awesome, amazing, clear, Caribbean glacier water you one might think of. This was it's very dirty water. It's very dirty, yeah. And you know we could have filtered it, but that clogs up your filters real quick. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. So I wasn't wanting to uh, to filter that water. I'm gonna get him the last of my water. We've been not sharing water bottles ever since I had COVID, and now he's sick. So now it's like, well, I don't really want to share water bottles, but pour some of mine into his. We were part of a campground and I went up to the front to talk to the people there to see if there was some other water source and if there was any food we could get, things like that. I'm gonna pay for another night since we're not going anywhere. And um, I'm gonna ask about the water situation, see if I can get some. Once I talked to them, excellent, excellent news. So, great news. I just talked to the woman at the front office and she said that not only is there potable water, I paid for another night here, um, but there's a town that is like a half mile away, the town of McCarthy, and they have a little general store so we can restock up on food supplies. I mean, we can stay here as long as we need to and we are in very good hands. So I'm feeling a lot more confident. Tim can get the rest he needs. The day is looking really beautiful, so I'm gonna go take a walk over to McCarthy. There was a water source, but I thought it was like a part of the campground, but it turned out to be uh, quite a distance away, more towards the town of McCarthy. So here's a map of the National Park. This is Wrangell St. Elias National Park. And here we are, McCarthy, right in the middle. Everything else is wilderness. We took this road in from Chitina. And so it's quite a ways to go to get out of the national park and then back to civilization is like way over here. So it's quite remote out here, but hopefully they have something in the town of McCarthy. I'm gonna cross this bridge and then hope to find the town of McCarthy on the other side. It's beautiful, wow. see there's these logs that may have supported another bridge. This is all an old mining area from the 1800s until 1913. It was the most profitable copper mine in the world. They gave me a little map and we're like, all right, you're gonna see this water source on the side of the road. Look how clear the water is. I wonder if we're somewhere near the water spigot where it's potable. The person who was telling me this, 
I don't think I'd ever been there. I was like, is it a pump? And she's like, yeah, yeah, it's a water pump. You're gonna see like a sign about drinking water. Finally, I hear this gushing water and there's signs that say like, this is drinking water, don't wash your vehicle or your pets or anything here. I looked and there is this pipe sticking out of the ground with water coming out of it. I thought, well, this is probably it, but it's just like a pipe coming out of the ground. I hope this isn't it, because there's no real notice whether this is drinkable or not. I really now wish I'd bought the water filter so that I can filter it, um, because I, I'm not sure if this is drinkable, but um, I'm gonna continue ahead to the town of McCarthy and ask someone there. If they say it's drinkable, then this is where I'm getting our water. <laughs> It comes out of a pipe. I definitely want to go to the general store. So I think I'm going to take this little shortcut. And the walk was really beautiful. The day was turning out to be gorgeous. And all of a sudden, I got really excited that I was going to be able to hopefully find water. That was most important but also to get some food at the general store in McCarthy, and it was all walking distance. Normally when we're on the motorcycle, I rely on Tim to bring me places. I can't ride the motorcycle myself. And so um, this was wonderful that I was gonna be able to walk to this place and help my husband out. I just- Yay, the B-roll, <laughs> I'm just in the tent like, ah. Oh. <laughs> He was, he was very sick. And so I um, felt good that I was gonna be able to at least somewhat remedy this really, really bad situation. I wanted NyQuil. Should have won my motorcycle boots. Yes. What else was on my list of demands? Water. Toilet paper toilet to blow paper. your nose. That was pretty much it. We need food, water, and those things. Wow, is that beautiful or what? five buildings in McCarthy and one of them is the potato which is the restaurant of McCarthy. McCarthy is very cute it's very small um, people there were super friendly. The campground's about here and I took the footbridge in and walked over to McCarthy where I am now. All right where am I going? I think I have to go down another road by the potato. And in the general store, I was able to get all the things we needed except NyQuil, but they had a decongestant, uh, which was good. Um, I was able to get some, you know, ramen noodles and things like that for food. And the woman at the mercantile store told me that the water coming out of the spigot that I saw, not really spigot, the pipe, is totally pure from glacial water. So that's where I'm headed now. So yes, on the way back, I filled up with the water and we were able... Glorious day. Jeez. We did it, folks. <laughs> she brought back water and food. It was amazing that I, I, was, did. I was feeling awful and I wanted hot things to, yeah. to consume. So I felt very accomplished about that. So I think this is the town's runway. This water bladder is six liters of water, so that's almost two gallons. Each gallon weighs about 10 pounds, so it's almost 20 pounds, so about 10 kilos. And it's not that that's so heavy, but I have to carry it using this little strap. That's what it comes on. <laughs> By the time I got back, it was not nearly as sunny and nice and warm as it had been. I could see that the rain clouds were forming and the wind was picking up. So as you can see, the weather has really changed 
quite abruptly. Can't even see the glacier anymore. Just covered in rain. My glorious day has turned a little cold and I'm going to eat my ramen that I got over at the general store. I knew that Tim was feeling pretty miserable, but since we couldn't go anywhere, um, there wasn't much to do except sit in the tent and listen to podcasts oh, yeah, that, that I had fun. downloaded should, yeah, on my I hate, phone. I hate podcasts and I make fun of her all the time. Like, oh, you listen to stupid podcasts. Who hates podcasts? This There's guy. All different not types. Anymore. No, <laughs> yeah, not but anymore. in my half conscious, my brain can't function. It was like being told stories. It was yeah. nice. Yeah, it was nice just to listen to weird stuff over and over again, sitting next to the love of my life who went on this, this water quest, <laughs> this, <laughs> this journey. So I came down here by the shore, and there's a nice little muddy section here where I can look for tracks, animal tracks, see what types of things have been walking around this area lately. You can tell they're dog and not fox because they're really kind of big and rounded. But over here, I see more dog, but it's possible that this is a fox track. See right there. Much lighter, much thinner. Sometimes you can even get the little hairs in between the pads. Good news is I don't see any bear tracks. Also don't see any moose or deer. Just a lot of people and dogs. <laughs> And that's fine with me. And it was pretty warm in the tent, but it wasn't that warm. I mean, you had to have all of your layers on yeah. and be under the and sleeping I bag. Through things, which yes. is gross. And all that sweat makes you cold afterwards. Yeah. So it wasn't the best situation for a sick person. That night, it was cold and rainy. There was this awesome noise in the background that yeah. happen every once in a while from the glacier just calving, mm -hmm. just the ice falling down into the water and splashing. The glacier is calving out there. It is so cool. You can hear it just and then it falls into water, splashing. At first I thought it was a bear splashing around in the water. <laughs> Pretty sure it's the glacier. <laughs> That was cool. That was cool. Tim's not feeling well, so I'm gonna go to sleep now. And the next morning when we woke up, we really had to make a decision of whether we were gonna stay another day or if yeah. Tim was up to keep going. So Tim is feeling a little better today, right? <laughs> How are you feeling? A little better. I still feel a little poopy, but not as like death. So the plan right now is to coffee. get up, make some coffee. I and didn't some have food. coffee yesterday. Yeah! Yesterday was the first day in my life, my adult in life. His adult life. Or that I've ever seen where Tim did not have coffee. But that was yesterday. <laughs> and I was going to, I wanted to stay another day, but we were out of food and it was just, you know. I could have made that track again. You could have. You guys would hear the tail again. This was half mile walk. <laughs> it was several miles. It was okay. several miles. So it snowed a little bit. It's really cool. So unfortunately, a bit of a change of plans. Um, I think we're going to head out of here today because the weather has just turned really cold, windy, wet. It rained all night and we actually have an opportunity right now to pack up without any rain. Fingers crossed. Um, it still looks like rain over by the glacier so it could happen at any moment and I feel like this is our window if we want to get out before the weather gets any worse. Um, this would be the moment Tim's feeling up for it. That's most important. It'd be good to get out and get to some place where Tim can get better with some warmth and hot tea and things like that. 
Even our fire doesn't even like stay very hot here. It's hard to make things boil. I knew that you know there there was probably a better place. I needed to do laundry. Um, I really just wanted you to be able to get warm and to get a warm shower. We wanted to get you tested. We wanted to just get out of there and get some good medicine for you and get you warm and feeling better. This is true. But we wanted to explore uh, McCarthy and the glacier and this mine before we left. Yeah. So I got a little bit of a boost of energy and we decided that we would, we would pack up and go explore that goodness. Right before we went to the mine, we wanted to just walk and see how close to the glacier that we could get. We've come to the end of the line, folks. I think this is as close to the glacier as we're gonna get. Here is a stream and the trail kind of ends. It turned out that we were already pretty close yeah. to the edge of the glacier and the walk was beautiful through all of these wildflowers. But at a certain point, it's all just water around the glacier and uh, the trail ended. The trail kind of tapered out, tapered out. Yes. Tapered I tapped out. out. You, you, you tapped out. So it was a short little hike, but still very beautiful. And we headed back to the motorcycle so that we could pack up and see one last thing dun, 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 dun. before we were going to leave McCarthy, and that was the Kennecott Mine. Goodbye, Kennecott Glacier. next episode. So thank you so much for joining us and traveling around the world on a motorcycle with us. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give us a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below. Ding ding. And we'll be seeing you next time. Peace everybody. Bye. Stay safe. And then I continued walking. <laughs>